All right, so I think the question, the primary question on people's minds uh, is how does this end when local city councils are, you know, handcuffing, for lack of a better word, local police, uh, the governors are refusing to send in the National Guard. How does this end? You know, we're seeing actually the answer to that question keep happening. You can start with Minneapolis, where the terrible murder of George Floyd took place, and then rioting began. And the solution there was let them riot virtually. And it didn't take too long for those liberals to figure out, hmm, this isn't working. And so they started advancing responsible policing. And in fact, they gradually brought the level of that violence down. So we, we could see which direction it went. And the same thing is now happening virtually as we speak in Portland, they, where there's been more day after day violence for a longer period of time than anywhere else in the country. And after weeks of those of us in the federal government, the Department of Homeland Security in particular, asking the governor, asking the mayor to step up and just do basic policing um, and to cooperate. You know, this at the professional level, this should be a partnership. And that's what the president has told us to try to, to establish everywhere to quell the violence. And they finally stepped up and you're seeing the parks across the street that have basically been staging grounds for attacking the federal courthouse finally cleaned up today for the first time in who knows how long. And we have joint policing going on outside of the courthouse for the first time in weeks because the Portland mayor, who is also their police chief, wouldn't allow it. And we're seeing up to today a decline in violence. So tonight will be a real test. How do the criminals and the violent extremists react? Do they get more violent? Do they get less violent? And do these state police from Oregon, uh, we know they have the ability to deal with these crowds, but do they have the political will behind them to actually do it? And if they do, we're confident, whether it takes one day or one month, that the violence will come down, that we will see peace established just as President Trump promised. Well, I certainly hope so. I mean, it's absurd to hear mainstream media pundits or even a Democratic congressman uh, either dismiss these violent riots as peaceful protests or call the violence that's happening in Portland a myth. Clearly, they're not peaceful in any way. I mean, you are your homeland security. This is what you do. You look not only at threats from outside of the United States, you look at domestic terror threats. Do you consider this violence to be just violent rioters and radicals? Or do you, do you believe that this is a domestic terror organization, Antifa specifically, and an insurrection intended to undermine American institutions? So first of all, to your point, protesters are not rioters and rioters are not protesters. You and I and everybody else listening, we're all comfortable with demonstrations and peaceful protesting. We protect that. That's part of what we're doing here. But there are people who are setting out to harm uh, the instruments of government, to hurt law enforcement officers. And if you set out to do that with the idea of scaring the other law enforcement officers, there's a name for that, and it's called terrorism.